Thanks for tuning in to watch The Ordinary Filmmaker. It's really, really hot today, it's humid, and I feel a little bit toasty myself. So if my face feels a, looks a little bit red, it certainly feels red, it's not the camera and it's not your television set, unless of course you've got your TV profile set to game mode. Enough of the temperature, let's get into today's review. I'm talking about the Youngno 85mm f1.8 R system lens. And when Youngno first reached out to me, I asked myself, well, who is this lens designed for and why would I get this lens over the Canon 85mm f2.0? So I'm going to answer those two questions in the review and that's what I'm going to focus on. I'm not going to spend 15 or 20 minutes going into really scientific detail looking at how sharp it is from the center to the edges. I'm going to let you do that as I throw some b-roll up showing you some photos I took with this lens. And that being said, before I get any further into pricing, let's take a look at the construction. The lens does feel solid. It's a rather small lens. It feels quite hefty and well built when you hold it in your hand. Now this lens, despite its low price of $272, does come with autofocus. And it also comes with a hood, which is really great. So I'm pretty happy with the lens in terms of its construction and how it feels in my hand. I briefly touched on price in the intro. Let's take a look at the price of the Youngno 85mm f1.8. It's priced at 272 US dollars, and that's on Amazon.com. But the Canon 85mm f2 is priced at $599. That's a difference of $327, and depending on what sales tax you have to pay, if any, that can increase the difference even more. So why would you spend an extra $327 plus taxes for the Canon when you can get the Yongno? Sorry about this brief interruption to myself, but I want to remind you to like and subscribe. Believe it or not, it really matters. It really does help this channel grow. Not only does it tell me that you like my video, but it tells YouTube and their algorithm that more people are interested. So guess what? They're going to show my thumbnail and recommend my video, recommend my video to more people. And now back to the video. At the end of this video, I'm going to give you my recommendation and my thoughts on the quality of this lens and who I think it's designed for and if it's something I would consider purchasing. Take a look at these photos. I'm going to use a Ken Burns crop so that way we can concentrate on the center, we can go out to the edges and what I want you to notice is how sharp it is in the center to the edges and what level of chromatic aberration there is because you, um, <laughs> spoilers here, there is some level of aberration and sharpness does fall off. Now what I did notice with this lens is when you're shooting it right around f2.8. It's when it seems to be at its sharpest in the center towards the edges. And most of the time I was shooting between f2.8 and f4. And I thought the lens performed quite well. I actually took these photos yesterday. We got up pretty early. I think it was around 10 o'clock, uh, but it was overcast. So the lighting was absolutely perfect. We drove to the train station and we were lucky enough that while we were there, a train arrived. So I was able to get some shots of the train, not just of tracks. And I was quite surprised because on the weekend with COVID and everything, I didn't think the trains were going to be running. So they were. And as we left the train station and then we walked through this industrial area, which is rather small industrial area because it's a rather small town. And once we got past this building, I realized that we were right in the middle of the farmer's market. So I thought, let's go in and check. It's like they set it up perfectly for us so I could take some pictures. And there was a lot of really great shots here. Uh, I took some shots of some popcorn and you can see with the depth of field there, it looks quite nice. I took some pictures of some jams and soap. And again, I'm quite happy with the level of sharpness. Now, yes, if you go to the edges, you will see that some of the sharpness falls off. And here's a prime example here. I actually took this photo a couple of weeks ago in the forest. And as you can see, without cropping in, this photo looks pretty good. It, the color looks great, the, the framing looks pretty good, the depth of field and the sharpness, and there doesn't appear to be any chromatic aberration. But as I move out to the edges, you can see there's definitely some aberration, there's some loss of sharpness. But if you're looking at this on an iPad, if you're looking at printing these off in five by sixes, if you're gonna be looking at them on your phone, I don't really see this being an issue. So yes, if you're gonna be pixel peeping, you're gonna notice these things, but if you're just looking at an entry level lens, well, then keep watching. Look at some more of these photos that I took at the farmer's market. 
And I love some of these shots of the produce here. Uh, these blueberries, I think, came across quite well. Uh, the onions did quite well. I did have to bring up the brightness quite a bit because for some reason, when I'm shooting with a Canon R5, when it's overcast and in anything other than sun or where we're balancing against the sun, for whatever reason, the camera seems to underexpose things. So I had to work on each one of these, but this is no fault of the lens whatsoever. And I also managed to get a couple of portraits of these two fine ladies who were selling some jewelry at the farmer's market as well. So yes, it wasn't just all produce. There were some other vendors as well, selling photos, stills, and other knickknacks. But I was there with my friend and my family, and I was focusing on trying to get some great shots to really show off this lens. And, and at the end of the day, what I was really looking to see with this lens is, how good was it? Now, if you've read some other reviews, if you've followed some other reviews, they'll say that the autofocus wasn't that good. And I gotta be honest with you, it never missed. I never had a problem with autofocus. Now, there was one time when I was uh, trying to focus on the tracks and the focus was hunting and going like this, but what I realized is the focus point was way up in the clouds. And it was one of those days where the clouds, you, you couldn't, even I couldn't gather any depth. They were all kind of like that monochrome color, that soft gray, and I'm not surprised it had trouble focusing on those clouds. I, I mean, I couldn't gather any detail. Outside of that, it didn't ruin any shots for me. The autofocus performed very well, and I never had to switch over to manual focus, so I was very happy with that. And the sharpness, the depth of field, I love that this is a 1.8. It allowed me to get some really, really great shots. It allowed me to get some great shots of the tracks here. But what I really liked about it is that it was pretty sharp. Um, if, if I don't recommend this for professional use. The, where I would see this lens, the perfect target market for this lens is, is people who are looking for an entry level or affordable full frame mirrorless camera like the Canon RP or the replacement to the Canon RP which is going to be listing for around 799 US dollars or an EOS R I think this is one of those affordable lenses and I think you're going to be very very happy with it again there is some chromatic aberration as well again this is more pronounced as you get out to the edges now I'm shooting with a Canon 55 or 55 millimeter I'm shooting with a Canon R5 and I have a 45 megapixel sensor, so I can crop in to avoid a lot of that. But for a lot of the professional stuff I'm doing, I'm gonna be using L-series glass because I wanna minimize that distortion. I wanna minimize that aberration and get that sharpness all the way out to the edges. But if you're looking for something entry level, you're tired of all these lenses that cost in excess of $1,000 by the time it's reached your doorstep, you really should consider this lens. But the real question is, well, why is it so much cheaper than the Canon 85 millimeter? Shouldn't you get that instead? Does, is Canon doing anything different? Or is this a bargain at 272 US dollars? Okay, I'll say first and foremost that the autofocus on the 85 millimeter is, is better. But like I said, in my test with this lens, and I used it for three weeks, I really wanted to get, I wanted to try this lens out in different type of lighting situations and different types of scenarios in the forest as well as in public areas and I never had a problem once so I was very happy with it so I don't see I don't see Canon's autofocus as enough for me to spend an extra $327 plus taxes and for me 13% tax on top of that takes the price well over $350 but there is one thing that would cause you to choose the Canon over the Yongno 85mm f1.8 and that's how close you can get to a subject. This photo here was taken with the Yongno 85mm f1.8 and you can see the flowers look fine at what this is not a Rembrandt in any way it's not to show off my artistic integrity it's just to show you in comparison to the Canon 85mm how much closer I can get to the subject. Now the Yongno your minimum focusing distance is about 77 centimeters and that's quite a distance i really did notice that when i tried to get close to things that like okay this is definitely something i need to check against the canon and once i tried it with the canon here's the photo i took with the canon same line of sight same viewpoint but as you can see i was able to get in a whole lot closer focusing on this one flower alone okay let's show the yongno again so you can see the difference this is the yongno and now the canon brings us in a lot tighter 
Canon does call the 85mm a macro lens and it's no way near as capable as the newly released RF 100mm f2.8 which I have as well. Sorry mosquito. So I'm really really happy with that 100mm but again we're looking at these two lenses the Canon 85mm and the Yongno and right at the beginning, I told you there was a $327 price difference between the two, and one of the questions was, is who is this for? And I strongly believe that this lens is for somebody who's looking for an entry-level full-frame mirrorless camera. You don't have a large budget. You don't want to spend even $1,000 on a lens like the 24-240, or even $600 on the Canon 85mm. So it's definitely for those looking, looking for an entry-level lens, or that would like to try the 85mm without having to spend a ton of money. Next, the other key capability. If you want to get close to your subject, if you want to dabble with macro, well then yes, that $327 is worth going to the Canon. So with the Canon you get slightly better autofocus performance, you get less aberration, and you get less sharpness. Sorry, you get more sharpness, you get less aberration and more sharpness, and of course you've got that macro aspect. So let's back this all up again. Entry level, if you're looking at, you've got an entry level budget, you wanna get into full frame, you don't wanna spend a lot of money, it's a good lens. If you're not pixel peeping, if you're not looking to blow this up really big, and even on a 52 inch television, I gotta tell you, not zoomed in, these photos look absolutely spectacular. I mean, I still come back to this one photo here. This is my favorite. This is the one I'm, I'm the most proud of because it takes me into the forest. It gives me sort of, I can imagine fairies and trolls not too far away. And that's why I particularly like this one. So again, you know, if you're not pixel peeping, then yes, it's a good lens. But if you do want to get closer, then you're definitely going to want to go with the Canon 85mm f2.0. Now, one last thing before I go, you might have noticed that I haven't covered off in any way whatsoever video. And I, you know, when I first started doing this review, I thought, yes, I'm going to do some video, but I want to do stills first. And I don't know what it is about 85 millimeters. I don't know what it is about that focal length, but you know, I never pressed the record button on video. I never switched it to video. I stayed in stills mode. For me, even though I'm the ordinary filmmaker, I really love this lens from a stills point of view. And I don't doubt that it can do well with video. But for me, at least, you must understand that I've got an L series RF 50mm f1.2, the RF 100mm f2.8, and the 24-105 f4 L series as well. So with all those other lenses, since I've got better sharpness, if I want to shoot 85mm, I'm probably going to go with that 24-105, unless, of course, I need to be able to shoot at 2.8 or 1.8. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with the Yongno, and I'd like to say a th big thanks to Yongno for sending me this lens to review. I've really enjoyed using it, and um, yeah, if you're looking at something entry level, consider the Yongno. And also, please consider using my affiliate links down below. Every purchase you make through B&H and Amazon gives me 2% back, which I can use to investing in this channel. And don't worry about which link you click on, as long as you click on any of the links down below and you purchase anything within your hour of shopping. I get credit for each one of those as well. But that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.